Okay, we got these XA cylinders all painted, or not painted, all blasted clean. And they've already rusted overnight. There's some corrosion these things have in them. So I gotta get rid of holding these out. I gotta set a pan as to do, but not right now. Lay them right there. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out our pistons clearance in here. So these are the two pistons we're gonna use. So this one's 12 and 3 quarters, this one's 13 and a half. That's the number on the mic when you measure them. So we got three quarters of a thou difference between the two pistons. So he's got these marked as being 30 over. I don't know. I don't know what standard is. So don't really matter. All I know is I gotta go bigger to fit them. So right now we're gonna go ahead and measure up to get our mic set with the clearance we're gonna run. So put this back in here and measure it. So depending on where you measure this piston, you get 12 and a half to, 13, to 12 and 3 quarter. So that would be the number right there in the mic. Okay, so we're going to give it, uh, I'm going to give it 3 and a half style clearance. That's the same number we use on the Ironhead Sports. It might go up to 4 depending on how the customer is going to ride it. It's supposed to come by later, we'll see. So we go one, two, three and a half. So that puts me at the sixteen and a quarter on my mic right there. That's how you set it. <clears throat> and you set the little mic here to match. So right now we're just barely touching it. Right there, just just catches it. So now this one's set. Now this one is set on eighteen. So, I don't know if you can read it or not, but it's on 18, so that's what this one is. So that means one cylinder is going to be 18, the other one's three quarter of a thou bigger, so it'll be 18 and three quarter. I don't know which piston is going to go in which hole yet. We're going to go hone the cylinders out and find out which one needs to be more bigger. That's how you find stuff out. So, I think we're all the way back. Okay, so. Put this back in the machine. <clears throat> we use a coarse stone. There's going to be a lot to hone out, I'm sure. Hopefully. We'll find out. See, we got to work with here. Say so we want 18. And we are down there at 9. So it's 9,000 I got to hone out. It's a lot of honing. Just when I measure the top of the cylinder where the wear is at. And that one is at 11 and 3 quarter. So that takes away almost half the honing. That's why I'm not going to bore it because I want to make sure I can clean it with these pistons and not find a big eyebrow that doesn't clean. Yet I cut the metal away and I'm screwed. Stuff like this, you do more manual labor so you can save the cylinder as little as you have to. Okay. Nice and sharp on the fins. So we're going to butcher this thing. We're going to knock some of these off a little bit. At least attempt to.
they're not coming off. Here's the cylinders are pretty hard. That makes it even more fun to hone. That means it might take an hour or two to do it. Sharp and they're not coming off. Yeah. All right, pull them out. Oh yeah, these are nice ones over here. I'm destroying the originality of the cylinders by doing this. I don't care. I don't feel like bleeding all day about doing the job. All right. So these things are still pretty damn sharp here. This side's not too bad. These are a lot sharper on this side. So these sharp ass edges here on the parting lip is what's going to cut the piss out of my hands. I'm sure there'll be other things that will catch on to me too, like right on there is another sharp one. There's all kinds of stuff that likes to eat you. Okay. Let's see what happens. Should have got up doing the swing all the way around so it breaks out your hands. Good place to go. eyebrow up in here, as expected, all the way around, but we're not too bad on this side, it's relatively round down there, which is a big plus, alright, so we are up to 11 right now, we've got to get up to 18. More to go. A lot.
trying to keep the torque in this as you're holding it. It can induce the taper into it. Let's see how much we're honing out here. I feel like it's cutting. It actually is cutting pretty good, surprisingly. Yeah, we were just, I was up to 13 and a quarter. So take out a couple thou there. That took about a thou and a half out. So. All right, I'm going to work on these a while, and I'll come back when I get closer. All right, it's been interrupted for an hour or two. So get back on the cylinders here. The, um, I already got them on the rough stone, so I'm switching over to the finer stone. I already did the one here. I think it was this one. Yeah, let's see what the board is. Trunk a little bit. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to go over to the this one. So this is the one with the crack and the spigot. So the customer came by. You looked at it. So you can see the low spot, the eyebrow in there, and you can see the crack, hairline crack up in there. And you can see it right here. So it goes down about where my finger is here and stops. So this is on a non-thrust side. The thrusting is on this side over here. So this is on the wrist pin side of the piston, so it's a low stress area. My guess is that uh, somebody broke the cylinder doing something stupid, dropping it or something. So either way, it's uh, it's not worth trying to weld that up. It only gets, it's only going to go down until it stops. Worst case, it might run into one of these oil holes down in there. And if you start trying to weld these whole cast iron cylinders, you're going to probably induce more headaches than what you're trying to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it and not worry about it. It's going to be only a put around bike anyway. It's not going to be something to be out tearing up all over the country on. So you have to look at the uses you're going to use it for before you decide what you're going to do to fix things. Okay, so this has the core stone in. We're going to find. I'm going to get rounder. Bounce back and forth, so it's still out of round. So we're getting close on size, we can't keep going real good. All the low spots are cleaned up now.
this set of 17, which we're going to finish with this stone. The last stones I'll cover the final stone. They're pretty even. A little bit out around at the top, and up this side. Light dragging our mic on the whole cylinder. I think it's pretty damn close. Cool this one down. This one here, we're going to make it three quarter of a pound bigger because that's the biggest piston is. Find out around condition on this cylinder in taper. Okay, this one here is good. So now I'm going to have to switch our stones out. A finer grip. So these are the uh, 500 stones, which should put us in the. Uh, uh, these are around 320 grip, maybe 280 or 320. I forget which one it is. Good enough for old crappy cast iron rings. Hatch we're getting there. Better get your angles, make sure it's good. Okay, this one's going to end at 18. Speed I go back and forth <clears throat> sets the cross out better. Okay, we're 
now it's 16, 17 and 3 quarters. So cool it off and get back to the full normal sheet. If you don't keep cooling them down, they'll uh, run out of room temperature. They grow quite a bit. This one here. Try to get this one to round up. again.
stick a little bit out around this in this thing, probably like ten inch and a half out around. This right here, about a tenth of it here, this is the same as the bottom. Down the center, best as I can tell. A little bit of drag on there, right in the dead center. Falls through kind of a little bit on that side. It's hard to feel my hands too big to fit the hole. Alright, so this one's pretty well done. We just got to do a little plateau hole on it.
Not much. He's got good old fungal stuff. It feels almost the same. Not much different. Probably just a hair. It looks a little bit, it looks a little shinier, but I don't really feel much difference. But if it's shinier, it's smoother, but yeah. finish is so damn rough compared to what I normally use. It's, it all feels rough. I'm sure it's slightly better. All right, so now I'm going to go clean these all up, and then uh, we'll see what we got. I think I'll move on to the valve job after that. And it's getting a little bit lighter because we lost another fin. So, so you can see where the this is where it broke off from. See how it's all black? That's because it's all rusted and corroded. I have no idea what part of that was holding on, but there must have been a couple little minor high spots. This is where I blasted where it was broken before, so I don't see any shininess area, but I'll clean it up so I can see what was actually holding it on. Probably not much. Anyway, we'll see. It was actually came off this cell over here, as I recall. Yeah, so you can see it's all black right here and shiny here. This is where it's blasted. This is where the fin was. So, still don't see what the hell is holding it. It definitely was cracked all the way across. So. Oh well, it finally fell off. It's going to fall off at some point. All right, that's it for now. Okay, we're moving on to the pistons now. So we got to hone them out so the wrist. Wrist pins will go in here. So I'm not sure how much that's going to take. You got a pretty sharp edge on there though. Go ahead and deburr the hole here a little bit. Until they go in. Not sure how much that's going to be.
quite fall through, but close to it. We'll keep that one with that one. up on that one real fast. This blue spot right here is a little, uh, a little bit gold up so it goes tight when it hits that on the piston. Not much, just a little bit. Once it gets through that it comes right out. Okay, so these are done. Now I'm going to do the valve guard holes. So I'm going to do this. Could be valve guard hole. These are all oddball guide sizes. So I'm going to use 11 32nd long. And I got a brand new stone to put in. brand new stone so it's nice and tall there's a stone part so that compensate for a bigger diameter okay let's see how that works heads in the cylinders in the way again Okay, so here's the cylinders after they're all cleaned up. So we didn't put two valve guides in that we're missing on this one. So now I'm going to go ahead and just going to light home and make sure there's no trash inside the guide holes. Just that's the pain. These sharp edges. popping out, jamming up to figure out the angles. I haven't done an XA before so I don't know the angle to hold it up. Okay. 
everything fits in there nice, nice and loose. And we do that so the hole will be nice and true and we'll have a bunch of carbon and crap in there. So when I put the valve pile in to grind the seats, it'll get center up where it belongs. Okay, seems to be good. Alright, so now I have more cleaning to do. Next thing I gotta start working on these valves. They need a lot of help. Alright, so that's it for that part. So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll be back.